So let's continue our discussion on objects moving in uniform circular motion. So let's suppose that we have the following object that is following our circular pathway. So notice that this lowercase r is the radius of the circle that our object makes. And notice that the velocity vector and acceleration vectors are exactly perpendicular to one another. So the velocity vector always points, is always tangent to the circle, and our acceleration vector always points towards the center of our circle. So we said earlier that the magnitude of our radial acceleration is given by the following formula. So we take the velocity squared and divide it by the radius of our circle. Now, let's talk about two more types of measurements known as frequency and period and see how these two measurements can help us determine what the magnitude of the velocity of our object moving in uniform circular motion is. So, let's begin with frequency. What exactly is frequency? Well, frequency tells us how many times our object goes around in a circle every single second. So, for example, if our frequency is 10, that means our object makes 10 full circles every single second. So, the units of frequency are revolutions per second, and it's given by the following symbol. What about period? Well, period tells us how long it takes our object to make one full circle, one full revolution. So, period is given by capital letter T, and it equals to uh, seconds divided by one full revolution. So, notice what the relationship between frequency and our period is. They're exactly reversed, they're flipped of one another. So, we could build the following relationship. Our period, capital T, is equal to 1 divided by frequency. So if we take frequency and bring it to the left side of our equation, we get the following result. If we take our frequency and multiply it by the period, we will always get a value of 1. So, how exactly can frequency and period help us determine what the velocity of our object is? So once again, we define the period with a capital T as the time required to make one full revolution. So recall what the formula for velocity is. The magnitude of velocity, or simply speed, is equal to the distance traveled divided by our time. So. In this case, we have a circle, we have an object traveling in a circle around the following pathway. So if we are able to determine what the distance is from this point to this point, we see that we can simply take that value, plug it into our distance, and divide that by the time because the time is given by our t, our period. So, what exactly is the distance? Well, it's simply our circumference of our circle. If we take the circle, cut it, and lay it out along the x-axis, we get the following result. And this distance is given by 2 pi times r, where r is our radius of the circle given in meters. So, this is the distance for one full revolution. So recall that the formula for velocity is actually displacement divided by time. But we're actually looking for the magnitude of velocity, so we're actually looking for the speed of our object. So we take this distance, we plug it into our distance here, and we take the time required to make one full revolution and plug it into the bottom. So we see that the formula for velocity, the magnitude of velocity, or simply speed, is equal to 2 pi r divided by t. And because t is equal to 1 divided by frequency, we can also write it in this notation. So 2 times pi times r multiplied by the frequency. So let's look at the following example. Suppose it takes an object 2 seconds to make 4 revolutions. Find the velocity, the magnitude of velocity of our object if the radius of the circle is 3 meters. 
So, once again, first we find the period. So, period is equal to the time divided by number of revolutions. So, we have two seconds per four revolutions, and that's 0.5 seconds per revolution. And now, we know what the radius is, so we use our formula for the speed or the magnitude of velocity, and we see that the magnitude of velocity is equal to 2 times pi times the radius, so 3 meters, divided by 0.5, and we get 12 pi meters per second, so about 37 meters per second is the velocity of the object moving in the circle. So this is the magnitude of velocity. Notice our direction of velocity all is always tangent to that point, to the circle at that point.